Why do you love sex and why do you feel it's so important to have it at least once a day, but even more than that? Those are your words. Sex to me is very enjoyable. Um, it's something that I get great pleasure from. And uh, for anybody that's ever had sex, they should know what I'm talking about. Your mother uh, told us that you actually bragged to her about being in a sexual threesome. Now, why is that something to brag about? I didn't brag about it. I was telling her about an incident that happened because I went out one night on my 14th birthday, and I was hanging out with my friend, and this guy got both of us drunk because we were celebrating for my birthday. And the next morning, she told me she had had sex with him. And I was like, no, I had sex with him. And it ended up that both of us had sex with him. Aha, uh -huh. you're 14, though. No, I'm 15 now. I was 14. <laughs> You also told our producer, and again I quote, one orgasm is not enough, I can have five and still want more, I'm just, I'm just very lucky. Is that what you think a 15-year-old girl should be thinking about all day? Well, not a lot of 15-year-old girls can say that they can have an orgasm, and until you experience, until you can experience an orgasm, shh, shh, shh. Let, her, let her talk, go ahead. Until you can experience an orgasm, then I guess you really don't know what sex really feels like. Okay. Sex without an orgasm could be very boring. Okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate the lesson in sex. <laughs> you know, I don't get many lessons in sex from 15-year-olds. It's, uh, it's always fun to come to work, to. Let me take a cue from you. Do you feel like people think you're trash? Do you feel that? Do I feel? Both of you, either of you, no. both Tinas. No. You don't feel trashy? No. Nope. Do you feel slutty? No. Nope. No. Nope. Do you understand that there may be people who think you are? I really don't care what anybody thinks about me. Okay. That's it. Let's hear what Tina's mother thinks about this. Christine, come on out. I feel bad in the middle of you guys. What do you think, Mom, about what you've been hearing? Well, let me tell you something. She was premature when she was born. I almost watched her die once. And AIDS is very real. She refuses to have an AIDS test. She's been very sexually active. And I don't want to watch her die again. Are you using protection each and every time? Um, when I first started having sex, I didn't use protection. But now, since like the last two years, I've been using but protection. But you know, it, you can get the disease yes, from before that. Yes, I do. Right. You found a card in Tina's wallet. Why don't mm. you tell us what the card said? Well, you know, it's a joke maybe to everyone else, but I found this. It's called Sexaholics Anonymous. On the back, it says, members exhibits one or more of the following sexual traits. Does it more than twice a night? Can perform acrobatic feats. Can't survive a day without doing it. Rarely does it in the bedroom. Considers whipped cream more than a topping for ice cream. If you come in contact with a member, please have sympathy for their addiction and help them in any way you possibly can. Uh, I really hate to tell everybody, but this more than covers what Tina does. Do you think she's addicted? Yeah, she is. <laughs> What kind of help? What have you We've told We've been them? in therapy, believe it or not, for four years. And Has it helped? Not really, because she just doesn't really get on with any therapist. She doesn't believe she has a problem. She enjoys sex, period, end of story, and she's going to do it whether I want her to or not. You don't feel there's any addiction? Yeah. It's just something you like doing? Yes. She goes to the point, I had to go, I had her placed in, in the court's system because I couldn't control her. She tried suicide and I went to court and said I cannot control my child. I don't know what else to do. Please help me. And what have they done? They put her in a home and when I tell you that it got worse, they were sneaking boys through the window. They were having sex in the group home under suit. And I'm not talking with boys, Sally. So These even, men were 21 and 25 years old. So even the state could not control it. What, what state is this? This is New York. New York State. You told us that Tina started telling you about various sexual positions she had tried. We were sitting in a restaurant, and she starts going into 
the position she gets into in her boyfriend's car when they he picks her up and takes her in the back of a building and has sex in the car okay and the people behind us have small children actually got up and walked away I have to laugh at her because that's the only way I can hide my embarrassment because to yell at her is going to do no I'm not going to start a scene I keep telling her Tina please calm down last night we had guests for dinner Tina's talking about the length of her ex-boyfriend's penis. <laughs> everybody was laughing. Everybody was laughing, but I, I was laughing, but I was dying inside because... She has parties when we're not home. Okay. One party. Okay, one party. And she thinks, I'm going to go out and do it again. She, Tell me about what you found when you came home from while they were having this party. Oh, uh, yeah, I went to Houston to pick up my other daughter who had stayed down there a couple weeks. I come home, my truck's not in the driveway. And it's like, well, this is Monday. My payment was due Saturday, maybe. Larry said, no, you know, not after two years of paying on it. They're not going to pick it up for two days. So I, like, frantically go in the house to call the police because my pride and joy, my pickup, everything I've worked for has just been gone. The house is a disaster. There's beer bottles, wine bottles, liquor bottles. My, my house burnt down a year ago, August. I just got it redone. It, everything was new. It, all this stuff is spilled all over all my coffee table and everything. My husband hollers, he jumps on the motorcycle, and he says, I seen your truck, and he takes off. Tina's got the truck full of boys, you know, and they're just kind of flying out as they go down the road. I, I go in a room, there's used rubbers. There's they were not used. They were used. They were just open. Oh. <laughs> we all decided to go and pick up one more guy, okay? Did you fill them with water because of no. the Tina, I don't understand why you think this is funny. Because. Why? It's funny. I mean, if you look back on it, it's, it's sort of funny. Would it, would it be Why funny it? to you if you had AIDS and had to tell your mother you were dying? Would that be funny to is you? That would you funny? find that funny? Okay. I don't find it funny, okay? I do not find it funny. I don't find it funny that my daughter looks at me and says, Mom, I want to have a baby now. Okay, I do not find that amusing, okay? Because you know what happens? She gets pregnant, she has a baby. Who raises that child? I raise the child. We'll be right back. Most people get into prostitution because they're forced into it. Me, I got into it because I like sex and I like the money. So I figured why not get paid for something you like doing? My girls who say they love sex and are trying to have sex as often as possible with as many men as possible. And Tina, the only thing I got from you is your mother works too hard to buy a truck and that she's only been sober eight years. I think that Three. alcoholism is a disease and mother is in recovery. Yes, and you ought to I'm be supportive of that, her. but you're using it as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of her, okay? If anybody right. says to you you're not behaving correctly, you say it's because my mother eight years ago no. was an alcoholic. Eight. That's your excuse. Three. And no, which is I, don't be who I am okay. I'm, I'm, I don't just follow the mother? crowd. Okay, I'm not like a sheep, and the sheep herd says, "Yeah, I'm gonna go." Okay. Okay, I want to tell you about my next guest, Rebecca. Rebecca is 17 and told us she has slept with at least 40 guys, and those are <gasps> wait, those are the ones where she knew the first names. She says she's very proud of her sex life but her mother, Sue, does not share that pride. Before we hear from Mom, let's meet Rebecca. Rebecca, come on out. Hey, girl. Rebecca, you're kind of young to have had so many sexual partners. Why do you like to have sex with so many men? I like to have sex with a lot of guys because I like to get off and because it feels good. And if you keep trying different guys, sooner or later you go find one you like and you'll stick with it. Okay, I'm trying to digest that. You told our producers you once had sex 11 times in one day. Is this a, a, are you trying to set a record? No, I just like having sex. So I do it as often as I can. Okay. You're one who has also worked as a prostitute, correct? Yeah. For what reason? Because I, I worked as a prostitute because I ran from home and I like having sex. So I figured, why not be a prostitute? You make money, which I like to do. And I also have sex, so why not get paid for something yeah. I like doing? I've, I've talked to a lot of women who were forced into prostitution and they felt it was horrible, degrading. No? 
I didn't feel as horrible litigating. I wanted to do it because I like having sex and I like making money. Your mother tells you that tells us that you dropped out of school three times. You don't like to work. You put everything aside just for sex. Yeah, I hold right now. I hold a job so that I can make money to get motel rooms at night so I can have sex. <laughs> Can you explain this to us? Why? Why do I save my money for hotel rooms? No. <laughs> Why is this, is this the only thing in your life? Yeah, school's boring. I used to go to school just to flirt with the guys. Working is boring. I do that just to make money for sex so I can rent hotel rooms so I can have sex. So the only thing that's important is the sex? Sex. Okay. Somebody else talk to her who's a grown up. <laughs> Thank you. I have two things. First of all, I want to say that the three girls may be sexually stimulating, but I don't hear any intellectual stimulation. I'd love to meet the guys <laughs> that are willing to do this. All 40 of them. And then some. And then I would like to know how many of the mothers also were teenage, active teenage sex people. She got married when she was 15. Oh, married. Okay. That's the key word, though. Married. But not before that. Not before that. And the other mother? I was married at 18. So you were also, but never before you were married, either one of you? No, I had sex with my uh -huh. husband at 16, and I married him when I was 18, okay. but I was, had no... And my last comment is that. your daughter looks very, very unhappy. <laughs> Tina, you unhappy. look very unhappy. Are you unhappy? You haven't smiled or anything. Are you unhappy? Well, it hurts me to see my mom... Upset. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going to stop my life. Okay. Very Go ahead. For the three girls, do y'all love your mother a lot? Honestly? Yes. I love yes. Mom. Yes. Well, why don't y'all grow up and show your mother y'all care and stop hooking around? Problem number one. Too fast. They're, they're growing Us up too fast. Us doing what we're doing is not, it, has, it doesn't affect, affect our mom. parents. We're going to do what we want to do. You guys aren't the ones that are spreading your legs, taking the chances of no, getting pregnant or doing anything else. Of you spreading but you're not the ones that are going to have to take care of kids if we get pregnant. Oh, no? Wait, 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 wait. I got a question for you. It's what our life, so we're going to do it our way. If you have a daughter, are you going to be so easy to sit here and say to me, when your daughter comes to you and says, I have AIDS, or mom, I have a disease, or mom, I'm pregnant, you're going to sit there and say, Oh, well, that's your life, dear. Go right ahead and live you it. You stand by them. You, we have yeah. to learn stand to make... Stand by, but it hurts. We have it to learn hurts. to make our... We when have you to learn by Could you just mistakes. give me... You can, re, you can continue in a minute. Just give me a minute. Rebecca's mother has been waiting uh, to have her say, let's bring her out. Sue, come on out. My producers tell me you're worn out. Are you worn out? Yeah, I don't know what else to try. What have you tried? I've tried counseling. I've, <laughs> I've done everything with her. You set rules, regulations. She doesn't listen. You can't be with a child 24-7. And I've, just, I've done everything. I mean, she's been into prostitution. She's had a gun put to her head. It was she's, kinky. She's been what do you mean <laughs> a gun? Wait, wait. What do you mean a gun put to her head? She was into prostitution, and one of the tricks put a, a gun, to, a loaded gun, to her head. To I thought her. it was kinky. I just enjoyed it more. I mean, she was arrested by port authorities. I had her brought back home. I had her put in lockup with a thousand dollar bail put on us, so nobody could get her out but myself. Um, she came home and became a stripper for a while. I mean, I've done everything. <laughs> what? What was so kinky about having a gun put to your head? And I found it exciting. <laughs> okay. How do you feel? Sue, you say that she's dropped out of school three times. She doesn't like to work. All she cares about is sex. How does that affect you? The girls have said, it's my life. It doesn't affect my mother. It, does it, it does affect? affect us because we don't know if we're going to wake up the next day, find them dead, arrested. I mean, AIDS, you know, it's... It does affect us. We, That's what condoms are for. No, condoms no problem, doesn't stop everything. And I mean, when it's your kid, it's, it may not make them think it's going to hurt them, but it does us because you look out for their welfare and you don't know where, what you're going to hear the next day. You don't know when you go to bed at night if they're going to be alive the next day. You don't know if 
you just, but it's all uphill. Ask, There's no answer. Let me answer. ask you a question. You, you said that you think Rebecca envies her three brothers because they can go out and have sex anytime they want. She, she feels as if they can do it, then why can't she? Just because she's a female, she doesn't see there's anything wrong with her because they do it. But do you think it's they right if they do it? I can do it I don't, think, I don't think it's right that they do it, but you can't, I mean, they're 20, 21, her two older ones are. And it's, you, you set rules and she, she'll obviously, she does it to break them just to be you know, defiant. I've told her she can't bring them home. She rents a motel room. I mean, she's working. I can't tell her how to spend her money. It goes to her. But I mean, so she. If you, if you put down a rule, she 18. goes to the motel room. Do I understand that? If Any kind of rule. I mean, I won't let her bring guys home. So her girlfriend and her, they share a motel room. They bring them to a motel room. Wow. You know, Sally, that is really sad. I, I just heard a comment out here. You can well, until she's 18. I've been through the system. Do you know the law here states 16. that at 16 years of age, your child can walk out of your house and you have no control <laughs> about it? <laughs> what would you feel about would letting you feel them not knowing where your child is? You know, I, I, I don't know about any of y'all, but I would feel very horrible. You young ladies, I'm going to tell you something. Your mother is the most precious thing you have. When you lose your mother, you lost your best friend. I know. I lost my mother, and I know what it is to go through. What y'all putting your mother through is pure hell. It is pure hell. I don't think they understand that. I really don't. Rebecca is living in a motel because she won't, mother, Sue, won't let her bring guys home for sex. Tammy says she's looking forward to the day when she can kick Tina out of the house. Now, can we find a better solution for these families? Let's try. psychologist. I think that's very important because who is in charge here? Dr. Peters, what's going on and what makes a young girl want to have sex with as many guys as possible as often as possible? Is this an addiction? I think it's an addiction but not necessarily to sex itself. I'm not sure we have real sexaholics here. I think we have kids who have very poor self-concept, Sally. I think that's at the basis of this. Everybody feels that when they have low self-esteem that they're going to go out and have that much sex, male or female. Well, I think if I think these three girls, I've been watching the show up until now, and I think that they're very lazy. I think that they're very lazy in terms of, I haven't Why? heard one thing about how do we do in school, do we do sports, are we involved in civic organizations. What I hear is, I've got a great body, I'm attractive, all three of you are beautiful, it's easy to have sex, it takes nothing. They're lazy kids, and it works, Sally. They get people telling them, you're beautiful, it feels good, you're terrific, you're a pro. They're lazy is yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. You mean anybody can really be good at sex? You have enough of it, you do well, you It learn. doesn't take a whole lot to do sex. It doesn't take a whole lot. Okay. Well, that's a new splash. <laughs> What do you think when Dr. Peter says it doesn't take, you say I'm good at it, she says it, that, that, that's no feat. It, anybody can do it. Anybody. <laughs> no. Not everybody can go out there and do it. Okay. Not. Excuse I mean, it's easy just to lay there, take me now. I don't think so. <laughs> you got to have practice at it. <laughs> Am I right? She's not you got to have practice. Not everyone can be as good as we are. are not you? everybody can be as good as we are. First of all, first of all, to all three ladies, especially two at the end, I appreciate if you wipe that grin off your face as I'm speaking to you because I'm talking serious stuff here. Right? Your attitude about sex, without a doubt, is like playing with fire and Russian roulette. Let me tell you something. Your promiscuity is going to put you in the grave. Sex was intended to be that special, intimate event with that special someone that you love. And now you are in a stable relationship. And then, and only then, hold on, young lady, hold on. Then and only then, will it not just be sex, it will be called making love. Different story. 
we're none of us are talking about making love. We're just talking about having sex and playing the field. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's take a break and uh, we'll be right back. Others to leave. Dr. Peters, you want to talk to the girls individually? Yeah. I really would. I'd like to find out. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to say you shouldn't enjoy sex. In fact, I think it's terrific that if you're having sex that you enjoy it, because lots of people have sex and don't enjoy it. So that's good, okay? Yeah. But what I'm, I'm, what I'm interested in is, what do you guys want out of life? Do you have any goals? What do you, Tina, what do you want to do? Do you have any idea what you want to be besides laying down? What do you want to yeah. do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, I do. What do you want to do? When I grow up? If you make it that far. Yeah. What okay. do you want to do? If you grow up. What would you like to be? Do you have any goals? Yeah, I play. I play in the band. And I want to play in the Marines Marching Band or in the Fort Worth Orchestra Symphony. Okay, so you'd like to Symphony. be a musician. Well, like Fantastic. Okay, Rebecca, what would you like to be? I, really, I don't know. Someday I just like, I want to work with computers and I like, Excellent. I want to get married and have kids, but I don't want to marry just anyone. I want to make sure when I get married, it's just someone who can also please me in bed, not only in my Terrific. mental life. Terrific. Because if they can't please me in bed, then I don't even want them in my life. Okay, you want to be a musician, you want, you want to be uh, working with computers, and you want to get married and you want to have kids. Tina, what would you like to be? Uh, right now, I'm studying and dog breeding and <laughs> grooming, stuff like that. Okay. Um, it's not funny. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so all three of you, girls, all three of you, all three of you have some goals, is that correct? Yeah. All right, now I've, I've got a very important question to ask you. Okay, you're 15, 17, all right? What are you doing now that's going to get you any closer to your goals? I play in band. You play in a band, okay, but do you need, do you think that you need to graduate high school? Oh, most definitely. Okay, are you doing anything toward that? Yes. Yeah? I'm, I'm... Are you in school? <laughs> Good grades. Okay, since that's I, good. Since I joined back in school, I'm okay. making the, very good grades. Since you joined back in school, so that means you had quit yes. for a while. Yes, okay. I just came you back. You quit maybe three a times. Ago. You yeah. quit for a while. You're in some kind of special program. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, because I can't concentrate because of okay. the family problems. All right. What I'm saying, kids, girls, girls. Oh, what right, I'm saying is, you all have terrific ambitions and you have some goals, but I don't really see that you're doing anything now that's really going to get you to those goals. And I'm also afraid that you all are going to end up very ill, perhaps dead, or pregnant. And, you know, it's like, I think you guys think about this far in front of your nose. Is that possible? Okay? Mm, no. And I'm going to do what feels good today, and I'm not going to really worry about tomorrow. Rebecca, are you worrying about tomorrow? Right now, I just want to have some fun. I mean, I'm, right. still, I'm only 17 years old. I have plenty of time to right. worry about all that stuff. Right. Tina, in Let your me letter, be a kid while I am a okay. kid. Tina, in your letter, you said you have plenty of time for responsibility when yeah. you grow up. I was responsible when I was little, okay? It's okay. time for me to chill out. And I think, Sally, what was your reaction you, when I you read in the letter, I have plenty of time for responsibility when I grow up. What was the first thing that came to your mind? She's not going to grow up. Exactly. <laughs> We're not going to make it. I, uh... I have something I want to ask you about. I don't, I brought up children. I don't understand why even today, and my kids are grown, mostly, that if I look across the room and give them a look, they're leveled. They're, they are scared to death. And we're talking big guys who I can give a look to and they're putty. Why aren't they afraid? Okay, because I would guarantee, and we can check with their moms when they come out there, that the moms were wimps. I would guarantee you okay. that there was something going on. They, they might have smacked you every once in a while, but in terms of consistent... Brick wall. Okay, hold on. In terms of consistent discipline that makes sense and that they had the guts to stand up to you guys when you started throwing a fit. These mothers. Well, I think, first of all, we have to be very realistic, Sally. These kids are, they're all teenagers, and they're all digging their heels in, and they're saying, um, my way, the highway, you can't stop me. If you, if you try to stop me, I'm going to run. And all three of them are quite capable of running.